During Prohibition from 1920 to 1933, bootleggers had to run moonshine without getting caught, and that meant building faster cars. Well, you have to change the engine, build it up a little, get your right gears, right tires, several little secrets. And you used to uh, not buy your product from a racing company. You'd go out in the junkyard and find what you could rig up to do the best job. And it was hard to catch a, a load of moonshine. They almost had to block them in to catch them. He, uh, they put uh, uh, air lifts, adjustomatics on them. Uh, those are the kind of devices that was going on in, back in the, in, the, in the heyday of the moonshine. And as the custom cars became faster, the drivers wanted to know whose was the best. It's been told that uh, some of the moonshine has got the bed who had the fastest car. And it was a cow pasture, something down in North Carolina. And they got to racing around through this cow pasture, making bets on who had the fastest car. And that's how the race really got started. They got to drawing crowds of people. I mean, there's some people like to go to the movies or go somewhere else. Most of everybody hung around here and went to the races. Those hometown races are the earliest roots of NASCAR. When NASCAR started, you would drive your car to the track and hope it was able to drive it back. Some of the most well-known drivers to come out of Virginia have roots in running moonshine, like Paul Radford, who souped up this 1937 Ford in this Franklin County garage, or Wendell Scott, the first African-American driver in NASCAR. And then, of course, there's Junior Johnson. And You know, he was caught. Uh, his daddy asked him to go to the steel and help him, and he did, and he said, I'd do it again today. Um, if, if it's necessary. And so uh, uh, he pulled 18 months at Chillicothe, Ohio in the federal penitentiary. But when he came back, what did he do? Went right back to doing it. Then Ford Motor Company come along and signed him up with a brand new Ford, high powered Ford in the race, racing business. And even though several famous NASCAR faces came from the moonshine era, the real connection between White Lightning and NASCAR was under the hood. There were probably more connection within the community of the people that built the motors, the suspensions, and worked on these cars than there ever were with the drivers. But not all whiskey making led to racing. For many people, selling moonshine was a way to make a living when times were tough. Rather than easily leading from one um, causal effect of moonshine leads therefore to, to NASCAR, I don't think it's just a direct equation, e this equals this. I think that, yes, for some people, but for others, no.